the next bout, an eight rounder in the cruiserweight division. Les juges pour ce combat, the judges for this bout, Jean Lapointe, Sylvain Leblanc, and Dale Sotheby. L'arbitre et Mike Griffin is your referee. Dans le coin bleu portant la culotte bleue et pesant 194,1 livres, sa fiche montre 11 victoires dont 7 par KO et aucune défaite. In the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks and weighing in at 194.1 pounds, his record shows 11 wins, 7 by the way of knockout and no losses. De Fayetteville, en Caroline du Nord, from Fayetteville, North Carolina, David Araya Washington. <applaudissements> et dans le coin rouge, portant la culotte noire, et pesant 191,1 livres, il est champion NABF des lourds légers, et classé sixième au monde par la WBC. Son dossier est de 16 victoires, 12 par KO, Aucune défaite et un verdict nul. And in the red corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at 191.1 pounds, he is the NABF Cruiserweight Champion and ranked number six in the world by the WBC. His record shows 16 wins, 12 by the way of knockout, no loss, and one draw. De Montréal from Montreal, Quebec, Dale Brown. Gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. No question. No question. I want a good, clean fight. Remember to protect yourselves at all times and listen to my commands. Touch gloves now. Come out fighting strong. Mike Griffin, tonight's referee, Del Brown. His nickname is Cowboy. He's originally from Calgary and now fighting right here out of Montreal. Dino Sisto ringside with Don Majeski as we get ready for fight number three here tonight at the Santa Pierre Charbonneau, and it is underway. You see that southpaw style leading with the right hand? That's going to be very difficult for a lot of fighters to cope with. First punch of the fight thrown by Brown and left to the body. Expect this to be a very slow start as these are two very excellent pugilists and it's a matter of trying to figure each up each other out early in the fight. Long left by Brown made partial contact left to the face and then made contact on the part of Brown. I think the fans here at the Saint Pierre Charbonneau are ready for a, a long fight. They'd like to see one after two first round knockouts in the first two fights we broadcast. Well, you can see they're a bit more tentative than the other guys in the, the opening bouts. Uh, again, a lot more professionalism, a lot more experience you can see here. Dale Brown, it's not about to take a chance to get an early knockout. Both fighters are well cut. Tremendous shape. They're very wasp wasted, Washington, I can say. Fake the left hand and went with a right. Del Brown. Del Brown now moves in. Another left. A counter on the part of Washington with a right hand. A body shot by Brown, and that made it through. Brown now fighting close to the ropes. Not really an aggressor early in round number one here. Now a wild left hand, and Brown ducked under it. The eight round limit should favor Washington because again, he's a fighter hasn't had as many bouts as Brown. He hasn't gone 12 rounds. So, you know, he can probably accelerate uh, all uh, go all out with this match uh, and, and be able to handle himself over eight rounds. Whereas Dale who's gone 12 with Leslie Stewart the last time I saw him, you know, will have to sort of step down. He's a 10 round fighter and uh, he hasn't been fighting this kind of a distance in quite a while. Brown now moves in, but Washington now Connects with the left hand of Brown. A nice left to the face, and Washington comes right back with a couple of body shots. That was a solid shot. Hands up. 
Both pugilists in the center of the ring. Brown moves in, a left hand, follows up with a right to the body. I think the left hand did catch Washington, but the body missed, or the body shot did miss. Oh, a left hand there on the part of Brown. Washington does have a two-inch reach advantage, 78 and a half to 76 and a half. So you'll see he's going to try to control that fight by keeping it outside and fight behind that, that right jab. And he's using that right jab rather well, and Brown trying to counter with the left, and he missed. Now a right body shot, and he missed again. A couple of left jabs by Brown that flared Washington. Wild right, and that made partial contact. The way to be the south for the class by left hook and was staggered Brown walked into a right hand. He's on the ropes now. Oh, another left hook. Well, Brown moves in with a left hand, but you're right, Don. As Washington showing a lot of patience in this fight and capitalizing when the opening creates itself. Dale just looked over the corner, sort of nodded his head that he was okay, a little reassurance he needed from the corner. But whenever a fighter does that, does that you know that he's been hurt. Dale started working a little bit better now, you know, mixing it up with both hands. Well, that was a wake-up call. Dale Brown now knows that he's in a tough fight here against Washington. Round number two action here. And Washington snapping that jab in well as Brown counters with the, the left and right lead. Now Brown moves in. Left hand made partial contact. Washington doesn't like what he sees, so he backs off just a step. Brown now moves in with a couple of left hands to the body. Brown is keeping him away with the left jab as well. Yeah, There's one. one. The jab is the most effective weapon in boxing. It sets up everything else. So even with sluggers like Brown, you've got to work everything behind the jab. There's another left hook, and then he worked well to the body on that. Worth mentioning, these fighters can go 15 rounds the way they are in shape. Yeah, it's good. It's a nice uh, respite from, the, as they say, the first two fights. These guys both really came to fight. He's looking over to the corner again, Brown. You see, he's looking at uh, Stefan LaRoche, one of his trainers. A little advice. Washington in the blue trunks with the red and white trim. And Brown in solid black. Right hand by Washington made contact. Though Washington, we have yet to see him really go to the body. Yeah, he's head hunting, they call that. And then he just got uh, caught with a right hand. A left hook and a right hand is the classic way to handle a southpaw, and that's an overhand right just landed by Brown. And there's another left hook. So if he gets on that kind of a mode, he'll be able to uh, control Washington. I don't think neither fighter is going to really win the fight due to one punch as round number two comes. Washington to pull it up over uh, a bit over his waist. Trick of the trade. Yeah, everything's a low blow. So sort of like shortening the strike zone in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Round number three underway here between Dell Brown and David Washington. Washington leads with a left hand. Oh, Brown like to mix it up a little more there as he took the initiative. You can plainly see why both these fighters are undefeated as Brown Went with a right hand. So yeah, I, uh, Washington's a bit too cautious now, I think. You know, he's showing he's got a good jab, but he's going to have to do more than that to beat Brown. Well, again, he's an adorable guy, and you see Brown rip the right hand to the body there. He's, you see Brown's more willing to take chances. Washington's a little bit too cautious. And Washington really hasn't scored any points yet on the body shots, so Brown has a definite advantage there. And there's a body shot or two or three on the part of Dale Brown. Another oh, one. Hook. Yes, hurt his man there with that one. Again, whenever you see a fighter shake his head, that means he's been hurt. That's right. And no we saw Washington do that. Mm -hmm. keep that pressure on him. He doesn't like it. I can hear in the corner telling Brown, keep the pressure on him, he doesn't like it. Well, Brown would like to continue using the body because, of course, those hands will come down, and then at one point, he can capitalize upstairs. 
Brown now that's moves a, in, right hand, and then the left to the head. Yeah, and then again, that's what he has to do all night to get through to Washington. Again, Washington too tentative. Oh, oh. there was a solid left. Good left hand by Washington there, and now Brown's in the ropes, and they're exchanging big punches. Now you see Brown again signaling his corner. He's okay. That's a good jab by Brown now. Oh. Brown just walked into a left hand. Yeah, and of course, he shook his head as if, as if that did not hurt him. Yeah. Second time he has done that in this fight. He has yet to make the adjustment on that left short hand. See, superficially, Brown's only had a few more professional fights than Washington, but the kind of opposition that he's faced is the big difference here. The experience. A wild right hand on the part of Washington. That missed. Now, center of the ring, a couple of body shots in close on the part of Brown, and then a wild left that misses on the part of Brown. See again, he's pawing with the right hand now, Washington. He's not doing any damage, and he's going to start to get a bit desperate in this fight because he's losing this round as well as Brown comes in with the right hand and left hook again. And if he doesn't throw some caution to the wind, Washington's just going to be dominated by Brown. Round number four underway here between Dale Brown and David Uriah Washington. Washington from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Brown from Calgary, but living in Montreal, boxing out of our beautiful city of Montreal. Brown takes the initiative early in round number four. There's a couple of, first the right hand to the body and then the left hand that missed to the head. Washington some showed some initial promise, but I think he's almost been reduced now to the role of a sparring partner. He's just letting, you know, Brown do the leading. He's not taking a chance, and there you see he's going to work again. He'll fire one shot, but uh, Brown lands two or three. Well, it's obvious that Washington, that was his fight plan going in. When do you expect him to change that fight plan? And right there, Brown connects with a left hand. Much to the pleasure of the fans here at Le Centre Claude. Pierre Charbonneau, I should say. A solid right by Brown again there. Brown moves in with a left hand, backing Washington towards the ropes. Around a body shot. This has got to be Dale Brown's best round so far. If Washington's touched his nose, that might be broken. I've noticed a few times he's breathing heavily from it. Oh, there's a right hand there on the part of Brown. He led with the right hand and made contact. But you're absolutely right, Don. Washington hasn't done nearly enough here. He's been good at what he's done, but you have to do a little more, and that is create some offense from a defensive position. See, now he's just letting himself get uh, tattooed, so to speak, uh, with the lefts and rights by Brown. And Brown, you see, he's getting more confident as the fight goes along as well. This is controlling it. It looks like a hard evening ahead for Washington, unless he really picks up the pace. Short left hand on the part of Washington. You see him oh, clutching. Brown moves in a wild right that misses and backs Washington into the ropes. Brown on the offensive here. Moving left, right, left to the body. The third punch in that combination made contact. Uh, due to the fact that Brown hasn't been seen much on national television, he doesn't have a great reputation. He's one of the most underrated fighters in boxing today. As I say, he's always in shape, always tries his best. Uh, you know, he gives 100% every fight out. He doesn't slack at all. And I think he can win the Cruiserweight title if he gets an opportunity. He's very uh, methodical, isn't he? Yes, he is. A relentless, sort of a Rocky Marciano, Gene Fulmer style, relentless, wears you down. And we are underway here. Washington and Brown. Brown moves in. Well, if they change strategy in the Washington corner, it's not apparent here in the early going of this round. Well, the corner might have changed strategy, but maybe Washington didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's still pawing with that jab, and that's about the only uh, punch in his arsenal. Now, he's, now he seems to be clinching and turning his back to Brown, which is a bad sign as well. And he also is lowering those trunks every chance he gets. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, anything Dale Brown hits below the knee, uh, below the chin, I should say, we consider a foul punch. You're basing it on those trunks. Brown is. Sorry. I'm sorry. That was a good jab by Washington, but it just doesn't follow up. Washington moves in with the left hand again. We've seen that continuously here tonight. Follows with the right hand, and he did make contact there as Brown was trying to duck it. Another right hand, and again he got Brown. There he goes. Brown in the ropes. Washington on the attack here. Well, this is the most offensive Washington's been. The right hand and the left are following it up. Now let's see if he can keep up that uh, momentum. Washington on the charge, moves in. Brown with a nice right hand. There's a cut over Brown's right eye, and it's in a dangerous spot right on the corner of the eye, as you can see it. Now, and then I think if Washington's seen it, that's why he's become much more aggressive, Dino. And Washington moves in with a left hand, made contact. Brown came back with a right hand. Left hand again by Washington, misses, and there's Brown with two short punches to the body and then one to the head. Now Washington's going to fight in close. What the fighter will do when he sees the fighter's cut is sort of rub his head into it, try to get that cut to open. He just dropped a little right hand on Brown, and you can see the blood now all over the face of Brown. And again, we'll left follow, We'll follow Brown into his corner. At the end of the round, see what kind of work will be done in that corner. It's going to be very important. Oh, nice left hand there on the part of Brown. Well, great fighters come back under adversity, and I think this probably stimulated Brown even more, figuring he had to fight one. He can't afford to let this guy stop him on a cut. Brown moves in with a body shot. And he sort of turned this round around. I would give this round to Washington based on the cut, based on the aggression, but he's not following up. Washington with a wild left hand that missed. Brown moving effectively here late in the round, better than he did early in the round when he was tagged with that punch. Well, what he's trying to do is keep out of the range of those punches so he can get to the corner and they can stop that, that cut. He's got Bob Miller, one of the best cut men in the world, in there, but he's got to keep away from Washington. And oh, with seven knockouts, Brown in the solid black trunks at 17-0 and 1 with 12 knockouts, and Brown is the defending NABF Cruiserweight Champion. Now his corner is telling Brown to jab, obviously, to open up that cut, and he did open up with a right jab here. Washington moves in. Max Brown towards the ropes. Fly right hand, Brown retaliates with the left, and I still see a bit of blood early in this round on the bridge of the nose of Dale Brown. Yeah, now I don't know if that's from the cut on the eye, or maybe that's another cut that's open. But uh, he's starting to be more precise in his jabs of Washington. You see he's trying to pinpoint them and work on that cut. Does this change Brown's fight strategy at all? Well, I think he's going to try to be a little less aggressive. He's going to try to watch for the shots, make every shot count. That uh, If he sees an opening for a solid punch, he'll do it. But I don't think he'll be as reckless to walk into everything as you notice he was doing the first four rounds in this fight. Dale Brown moves in. Now Washington leads with the left hand. Oh, nice left hand on the part of Washington right there. And you can see a bit of the cut starting to open again. And he's throwing that jab, and then Dale's nose. There may be a cut on the nose. I can't tell from, uh, from here because you can see the blood on the bridge of the nose as well. Neither fighter has really been rocked in this fight. I know Brown was cut in the last round, but kept his composure, stayed in there. Oh, there's a big right hand on the part of Dale Brown, and that sent Washington's head back. Let's see if he can follow up. Brown on the offensive, a short lap. But still, Washington moves in. Yes, as I say, he's, this is his chance to turn it around. Left and right now, he's turned his back. Now, I'll tell you, a fighter, when he turns his back, he's still open to be hit. You must protect yourself at all times, and Brown being a gentleman, I guess, by nature. But look at that cut now, Dino. It's really bad. You can see the blood coming down, and there's a left hook by Washington that opened it up again. And Brown connected with a short right hand about 20 seconds ago. Let's see if he can keep it up. And you're right about the cut. It's not a pretty sight. 
as jabbing again, Washington again. He's got a chance to steal this fight, but Browning has got such heart, he's not letting him. There he goes, brawling into him, even with the cut. Brown came in with a three-punch combination, a shot to the body, right hand, right hand to the head, and then a left hand to the left head. As Washington moves in with the right hand, he leads with that right hand, and then when the opening is created, throws the left. He looks at... You know, a green flag for Washington to go all out. If he doesn't now, he doesn't deserve to win this fight. Well, he's going to try to headhunt some more here and open up that cut as much as he can in round number seven with two rounds to go. We'll keep an eye on it as we bring you this fight between Dell Brown and David Uriah Washington. Washington with the right hand leads, keeping Brown away. Brown left hand, and that made contact. He followed with a right to the upper part of, part of the torso. Oh, a solid left hand by Washington. You hear Dell Brown's corner, hands up in the background. Well, that's what you got to do to keep away from getting cut, but he can't just throw the fight away. I think he has a comfortable lead, but you just can't concede that, you know, especially with a cut, because uh, it's going to put you behind, and that can affect the judges as well. Brown moves in. Left hand. Well, I think this fight lived up to expectations thus far. We have seen the momentum swing here because of that cut, and we've seen a change in strategy in Dale Brown's part. And you're right, Don. He has not led uh, that much later on in this fight with his face like he did early in the fight, which was not very good on his part. But did a lot of other good things early in the fight. Yes, he's taken on somewhat of a defensive posture, but in, again, but now he's the aggressor with the left hook. And yet with Washington, with Dale Brown not being the aggressor, Washington is letting this precious opportunity slip away yeah, from him. You're you know? absolutely right, because right there, you saw Dale Brown just wait for the moment and score some points and he's for the combination. So every time Dale has a chance to be aggressive, he is, despite the cut. And here you go, Washington standing there watching his work, sort of like a, a, an artist admiring his painting. Uh, he needs to be aggressive. Washington moves in again, fakes a right-left combination, goes left first. Love this television shot from directly above. And you see all the work inside is Dale Brown works the body. Even though he's tied up, he still works inside, even though the cut. So he's fighting to win this fight, despite the fact that he uh, has a big disadvantage with the cut on the bridge of the nose and the eye. And I think they did a better job in between rounds because we're seeing less blood this round than we did last round. So kudos to the corner. Yeah, Bob Miller does an excellent job there. That's it. Washington moves in, but he's very hesitant. He's not opening up. He throws a combination there, and then the fighters come together. And well, he's broken up by the referee. He's taking on the posture of a loser, and as I say, psychologically, Brown is dominating him. Even uh, if he's not as aggressive, and yet every time he gets an opportunity, he lands the blows. Now, there's a lot, but he's covered up well, so defensively, there was no problem there for Brown. Late in round number seven, Washington came in with a left hand, but Brown had the gloves up. And defensive in this eighth round, and we should expect to see Washington come out real strong. Well, he absolutely should. That's the way I would pattern it up. I had either one of those corners. Tell Dale to box and take it easy. Tell Washington to go all out. This is the final round scheduled for eight. Washington moves in. Nope. Well, short left hands on the part of Brown there. Yes, he's going, he's becoming the aggressor rather than the defensive fighter. Again, that's the heart of a champ. He wants to win no matter what. And you know, a corner can give you any advice, but the fighter can disregard it. And here, to his advantage, Brown is disregarding it, and he's going in there to fight and to make it no doubt that he's the winner. And there, Washington connected with a short left hand. Brown with a good right shot to the body. Oh, and a good left hand there on the part of Washington as Washington continues to headhunt. And again, that strategy was effective in opening up the cut, but he did nothing to follow up on that. He just was not aggressive enough to deserve to win this fight, Washington. And he also has not been able to lower Brown's hands. Washington moves in. Brown against the ropes. An exchange there. Brown continues to fire punches, but Brown 
also took a left hand to the face. Unfortunately, it's late enough in the fight, I believe he doesn't have to worry about that cut. Uh, rarely would a fight be stopped in the last round. Washington moves in. Brown, a nice right hand. And that stunned Washington as he backs towards the ropes. And Brown continues with the initiative. Oh, left the right, right to the really hand. Hurting. Brown. Oh, Washington tremendous. in trouble. He's going for the knockout here, Dino. Oh, a tremendous. I could stop this, by the way. He's going to stop now. Brown, Washington's tremendous in trouble. Victory. And he's down. He's out. It's all over. Dale Brown rallies in round number eight here. There's no need to count. Five, six, He's out seven. on his feet. Will the referee allow it to continue? No. He doesn't know where he is. That's it's it. It's over. Dale Brown with the winner tonight here. 18-0-1. 13 of those 18 wins by knockout. Not a pretty picture. Not at all, but you want to take that win. Win ugly if you have to, but just win. Yeah. Fans saw the first two fights here tonight, and they ended in the first round here. This went eight rounds, but a knockout on the part of Dale Brown. You now it's reminiscent of the Rocky Marciano as of Charles fight. You can pick one from history where Marciano had a terrible cut. Uh, by Charles. They were going to stop the fight. He asked his manager for one more round and knocked him out in the eighth. And here's the sign again of a champion that he could have just coasted the last round, Dino. He had to fight one. He wanted to win. He wanted to win by knockout. And here we take a look at the replay. Well, the left hook set it all up. And in these, again, the right hand smashing through. Again, right over, over the arms. Another oh. smashing right. And just he collapses there. That just was a fusillade of blows. And see how happy he is to have that win. He really wants to win and wanted to win impressively. No boxer wants to be cut. Uh, it, was, it was a tremendous story. I mean, it, it's an inter it was an interesting fight for many different reasons, but it went back and forth in trying to figure out the outcome because of the cut. Yes. And then late, Dale Brown, when I thought he was going to come out and play safe in the final round, he sensed that he had Washington in trouble after a good punch and just went after it. Absolutely, and as I said, that's the kind of a fighter that marks one of the top contenders. You know, you win despite adversity. And as we said, he could have coasted. The strategy was the opposite. Washington was coasting. Brown was going out there to slug. He didn't care about the cut. He threw caution to the wind. And I'll tell you, that's the instinct of a champ because we knew he had a November 27 fight with Adolfo Washington. I think that he may not have been knocked out by Washington, but he probably knocked out of that fight November 27 with yes. this bad cut. But he said he didn't care. He's not getting big money tonight, but he's going to go out there. He's got to give the fans 100%. And that's a sign of a terrific fighter that's got every year mark of being a world champ. And I think we can eliminate the name of Dale Brown from the November 6th program, but that's okay. As Dale Brown... Here wins over David Uriah Washington. And though Uriah Washington came into this fight, and I thought he had a, a solid fight, he really did not take advantage of his opportunities. And there's a shot of Dale Brown. What a shot that is. And oh, yeah. Looks like a warrior. No, no question about a, a, a happy victor and, and a guy who came through. And then there's the real fighter, the question of blood. Got the championship belt, and uh, that's just why he's a champ, because he fought like one tonight. Prior to this fight, Del Brown was walking around the ring and he peeked over at this table and gave us a big wink. Everybody in Calgary, everybody. Saluting everyone in Calgary. 